Mmm. Do you enjoy eating that delicious Italian continental cake and would love to learn how to make it yourself? Come along with me and I'll unlock the secrets on how to make this beautiful cake successfully each and every time. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. And so after many, many requests from family and friends, I'm finally making my favorite continental cake. And so I was introduced to a continental cake when I was around about five years old, and it very soon became my favorite cake. Nothing compared to an Italian continental cake as far as I was concerned. And so every year I would have a continental cake for my birthday. That is, until I moved to Batemans Bay, where it wasn't readily available. But one day, I was on the internet and happened to find a recipe. I wasn't very confident with it, but very desperate to have a continental cake, and so I tried it. And that was 14 years ago. And my first try, I got it pretty close to a continental cake, probably about 70%, and I was really happy with that. And it wasn't long after, we moved into our new home in Bait Haven, and our neighbours happened to be Italian. And one day we had a function on and I had made a continental cake for it. And I gave our neighbours a slice of the cake. And the next day, Tina, our neighbour, came back with an empty plate. And to my surprise, she gave me a huge hug. And she said, that was beautiful. And for me, that was an affirmation that I was on the right track. But the only advice she could give me is that the custard smelled like eggs. And so she taught me a technique on how to remove the smell of eggs. So I'd like to dedicate this video to the Scroy family, especially Tina, Con, Jana, and Sam Scroy. God rest their soul, and thank you guys. And so now I have formulated the recipe, and I'm gonna be using it to make this cake. And I will put it in the descriptions below. And there's a lot of ingredients here for this cake. Uh, I won't mention all of them now, I'll just mention them as I go through the process. And there is a, a number of steps here, but they are quite easy. But the only thing I do wanna mention at this point is the rum. So this cake does have rum in it, not a lot, and it's cooked in. And so I used to use all different type of rums over the years, very expensive rums, but I've come to know that Bundaberg rum is actually quite good and very affordable. Okay, so now I'll just get into it and show you how to make the cake. Before I start, I'll just put on an apron, which my wife bought me. Musa, Donut King. I think she was mocking me. So the first thing we're gonna make is the sponge cake. And so we preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius, and that's fan forced. If you don't have fan forced, it's 190 degree. Okay, so going by the recipe, to make the sponge cake, we need eight eggs. So these eggs themselves have been taken out of the fridge. If you do store your eggs in the fridge, um, let them come back to room temperature before you cook. And these particular eggs are actually from our chickens. Nice, big size eggs. In total, you will need 16 eggs. Okay, so I'll separate the egg white from the egg yolk. And I'll place the egg yolk into another bowl. Okay, so we've split the egg white and egg yolk. Now we'll use our Cambrook mixer and beat the egg white. So what's gonna happen here, it's gonna become a bit stiff, so we don't over mix it. We're just trying to get it all fluffy. We're almost there. It's almost like a creamy consistency, and that's about it. So now, we'll grab a smaller bowl, and we'll grab two cups of white sugar, and one and three quarter cup of self-raising flour. And now, mix the two in together. And if you do this really well, it will blend better. It won't clog up in the mix. The flour I tend to use, is white wings and it's self-raising flour. And so if you don't have self-raising flour, uh, you can actually use plain flour, but you must put some baking powder and a touch of salt in it. Okay, so now I'll just place in some vanilla essence or extract. Uh, this one here is made by Queen. So you just put in one teaspoon. Okay, so now I'll slowly feed in the sugar and the flour into the egg white and beat it at the same time. Okay, you can hear the mixer now starting to struggle. 
it's just getting a little bit thick. So now I'll just place in the egg yolk and I'll put in the remainder flour and sugar. Okay, I'm just gonna scrape the walls down just to make sure everything's blended in well. Just put the remainder of the egg yolk. Okay, so you mix it in for about two minutes. And what I normally do is just leave it to sit for about two or three minutes. Okay, so while the cake mix is resting, I'm gonna grab my springform cake pan and butter it and then put some flour on top just to stop the cake from sticking to, this, to the metal. Now this cake pan is a 23 centimeter diameter. So we just place flour into the pan and just mix that around, tap it, and try to go as high as you can with that flour, almost all the way to the top. This cake will rise quite high. So there's a lot of flour still in there. Make sure you shake that flour out. So I'll put that on the side. So you probably can't see that on camera, but it is changing color. It's just going a little bit lighter. That means it's mixing in really well now. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's looking really, really good. Okay, so now I'll just place it in the cake pan. Okay, there we go, put that in. So that'll take around about 40 to 50 minutes to cook. So while that's happening, I'll clean up the mess. So the next stage now is making the crema pasticera. Uh, so this cake has two layers of cream or custard. Uh, we have a vanilla and a chocolate, and they're both made exactly the same. The only difference is the second one, you add some dark cooking chocolate. And the one I'm gonna be using is Cadbury. Okay, spot on 80 gram. And so this Cadbury baking chocolate, it's a dark chocolate and it's 45% cocoa. And so the ingredients are pretty basic. We have four tablespoons of self-raising flour, four tablespoons of white sugar, one tablespoon of butter, not margarine, and four egg yolks. And so as I mentioned earlier, to stop that egg smell in the custard, in the cream, uh, what we do is we grab a cinnamon stick. So the cinnamon stick I use is Hoyt's. So basically I just get a little pot and I crush that cinnamon stick. Okay, and then all we do is just put some water in it and boil it. Okay, I almost forgot. I need three quarter teaspoon of vanilla essence in both. I'll just give a rough measurement. This is a one teaspoon. And we also need two and three quarter cup of full cream milk. And so the milk I'm gonna use is Dairy Farmers. Okay, so now I'll just transfer everything over to the stove. Okay, so we boil up the cinnamon stick, just uh, reduce that down, boil it down to just a very small quantity, and we just put a few drops in both the custards. So while that's reducing down, we'll put the milk on a small element and just put on half. Okay, so while we're waiting for the milk to warm up, we're just gonna mix in the sugar and the flour. Okay, so you can see the water has now gone brown, it's condensed down, and it's almost all evaporated. So that's what we're looking for, just a little bit of that juice. Now we'll just place half of that juice into this milk. Okay, so the temperature's right now. It's uh, nice and warm. I'll place in the whole lot of sugar and flour and just mix it in. I am using the potato masher. I find it's really effective. Just keep stirring, make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. Okay, so now I'm just placing in the eggs and vanilla. I can see that thicken up nicely. So once it starts bubbling up, then you allow it to cook for another four more minutes. So I'm really excited about making this cake. I have two taste testers coming to try it. And so when you make this cake, you usually make it the day before to allow all the ingredients to soak in and it really does enhance the taste. And so one of the taste testers is Jenna and the other one is Angela. And yes, Angela's Italian. Okay, so it's the 40th minute and you can see the cake has risen quite high. I'll just poke it in with a timber skewer. Not cooked yet. Okay. Put that back in for a little bit more. Okay, so that's four minutes. I'll now take it off the heat and I'll place one tablespoon of butter and just mix it in for another minute. Okay, so that's it. Now I'll just place this in the bowl and get ready to make the next one. Just put in the flour and the sugar. Stir that in, same. So once again, I'll just place in the egg yolk and the vanilla. Okay, so it's boiling again. Now I'll just let it boil for four minutes and then I'll place the chocolate in. Okay, so now it's four minutes. You can see that it's quite thick. Not overly, but still thick. And so now I'll place in the chocolate. I'll just break that up. There we go. Okay, and I'll just stir that in. Okay, so we've stirred that now for another minute. Now we'll just take it off the heat and we'll just put another tablespoon of butter. 
and just mix it in for another minute. Just mix it in properly. While you're making the other custard, you come back to this one and make sure that it doesn't uh, create a skin on top. So just make sure you just keep stirring that in. Okay, there we go. Pour that in. The crema pasticcera el chocolate is now finished and I'll check on the cake again. Just put a skewer in again. Beautiful. Dry all over. That is perfect. All right, so now I'll just take the cake out of the tin. I'll just unlock that. Just take it all off. I will push that down a little bit just to flatten it. It's a good time to do it while it's hot and it works really, really well. So just hold it down just for a little bit. And you can see how high the cake was before and now it's collapsed down. So now just go around slowly and break the contact around the edges with a butter knife. Keep turning around until I get it and it's almost done and there it is. Beautiful. Just take all those bits off and I'll put it on a gauze. There we go. Okay, so the next step is making the syrup and it's the easiest bit of the whole process. So we'll just put a small pot on the stove. Just turn that on. And first we'll put half a cup of water. We put one third cup of dark rum. Then we put three quarter cup of sugar. And so then we stir it in. So this will heat up pretty quickly. And all we do is just bring it to a boil. Okay, and there we have it. That literally only took one minute. I'll take that off the heat, turn that off. So we just let this cool down and then we put it into a spray bottle. Okay, so the custard is now cooling down. I'll just give it another stir, blend it in. I'll now put them in the fridge. Okay, so the next step now is to toast the flaked almonds. Now, it doesn't matter what almonds you use or what flaked almonds, it's gotta be very, very thin. If they're too thick, when you put them on the cake and when you're tasting it, it's overwhelming. It's too much almond. So you need a very thin sliced almond. This particular one is a Woolworths brand and it works quite well. And basically, I'll just put it into the toaster. And so because these almonds are very thin, they can burn very, very quickly. So you've got to be very attentive to them and make sure that you flip them around a few times. Okay, we'll just check that. And there we are, look at that. They're starting to toast nicely. They're still not ready yet, but it's looking pretty good. So just spread them out evenly and put them back in. Okay. You really don't leave them in for too long, probably half a minute, maybe only 15 seconds. Look at that, nice golden brown, very nice. It's almost there. And that's what we're aiming for. Just a little bit more color and it'll be great. Okay. And that is about it. Look at that. So there's some darker and lighter colors which is give it a bit of texture. Okay, so while everything's cooling down, I've got Marion to give me a hand doing the writing. Now usually I use the queen icing. These are so easy to use and you just write straight onto the cake and it looks great. But I want to go a little bit more fancier today. So Marion's gonna do the writing, she's very good at this. We're gonna use Cadbury baking chocolate, which is a white chocolate. And all you do is put it in the microwave, you put the food dye, put it in your pipe and you write. And so Marion has already written on here, thank you Jenna and Angela from Quantum Home Improvements. Okay, so all we do is just open the packet. We'll probably put about three bars in it. I think three bars would be plenty. So we'll pop that into the microwave, probably for half a minute at a time until it goes soft. Okay, let's see if that's enough. Probably a little bit more. Okay, so we'll give it another 15 seconds. Is that soft enough? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so now we'll just put some colour in. Okay, so what we're aiming for is the Quantum Home Improvements colours. Okay, so what Marion's doing is just putting in uh, cling wrap so it doesn't stick to the wall of the pipe. Okay, so basically she's made a little hole so it can come from the base. Okay, all right, so now she just do the writing. It's 
It's a right consistency, right thickness, beautiful. That looks brilliant, Marion. Okay, so what do we do now? Yeah, we'll just put it in the freezer and wait for it to go hard. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so we're almost done. That looked brilliant, Marion. You did a great job. Good girl. Sorry about the food dye. Okay, so we're ready now to put the cake together. And so the cake turned out really well. A little bit overcooked, not too much. Uh, it should be just a slightly lighter color than that. We did change the element in our oven just recently uh, and it cooked a little bit more than I would have expected. But it's gonna work out fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna place the syrup into this spray bottle. I find it's a lot easier to apply the rum this way. So I'll just put a funnel in and just pour that in. I'll just keep that on the side for a moment. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the cake into three pieces. So we're gonna make two cuts. And so you need a long serrated knife and that it goes all the way through the cake or most of the way through the cake. Basically uh, even incisions. So one there and one there. And now, so when you're doing this, I find if you hold it level like this, just watch it from a distance and just cut in. Okay, try to just be a little focused on this, a little gentle. Okay, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's a perfect cut, okay? So that's the first cut, and look how nice that is. That's a beautiful sponge cake. As I said, a little bit cooked on the outside, but that's fine. The syrup will actually soften that up. So now the second cut, there it is there. So basically they're even cuts. So again, just place your knife in. So it does take a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, it's quite easy to do. Okay, and as you get closer to the cut, try to even it out and then just cut the middle out. And there you go, done. Okay, so now this is the easy bit. Just spray the liqueur on and try to spray it evenly. Now don't overdo it, because you won't have enough to do the whole cake. So you're just moisting the top, that's all you're doing. It will go through, okay? So this is the middle piece. I did that first because the middle gets two doses. You turn that over and you'll do it again on the other side. So if you're not sure how much to put on, put less first, do all the pieces you need to do, and then come back and put a little bit more. So I'm basically gonna put them all even for now. So there are other ways you can apply this rum, this syrup, but I just find this is actually the best way for me. Now you can make more of a syrup if you want when you're making the mix, but I've discovered uh, that it's actually better to put less rather than more because too much makes it too overwhelming. The taste is overwhelming. It's actually one of my sons, Marcus, who brought that to my attention. He asked me to make it for his birthday one year and he said, Dad, can you put less rum in it? Okay, so using the base of the cake container, I'll just put the top section of the cake down first. That now will become the bottom. So now using the custard, I'm gonna use the chocolate first. Traditionally, it's actually the vanilla that goes first, but I found that the vanilla is a little bit softer than the chocolate. The chocolate holds its weight better. So I found if I put the chocolate first, when I'm putting the top on, it doesn't uh, cause the vanilla to ooze out. Just place all the chocolate custard in. Now when you taste this custard or this cream, uh, you'll find it doesn't have much taste. And that's the beauty of this cake. Uh, it's the combination of all the tastes that make this cake taste nice. So it's not the custard alone, it's everything combined. So the rum mixed in with the custard just tastes brilliant. And plus also the sponge cake and the cream outside and the almonds, it just brings it all together. Okay, so now I'll just spread it just as even as I can. So if you cut the cake on a little bit of an angle and it's a little lopsided, don't panic because you can actually fix it up with the custard. So now this is the middle. I'll just put that on and just crush that down. There we go, look at that. That is looking scrum diddly umptious. Now, this is where we put the second lot of rum on, the opposite side. So just spread it around evenly, just initially, and then you can use the whole lot to finish it off. Okay, this is looking really good. I've only got a little section to go just here, and it's all covered 100%. I'll just put a little bit more on this one. Okay, 
So what I'm gonna do before I put the next lot of custard on top, I'm just gonna put it in the fridge just for one minute, just to let that cool down again. Uh, now we're gonna do the cream. So basically I'm gonna do it with two bowls. So what I do, I learned this technique a long time ago from a pastry chef. Put some ice in a large bowl, okay? And then put the actual bowl that you're gonna make the cream in on top. Okay, so the cream itself will crack if it's too hot, if it's too warm. So what we're gonna do is try to keep it cool. All right, so what I'll do is just place in the creams first. So that's, I'm using here a 600 ml, a milliliter of Bedella uh, thickened cream. And 300 ml of pure, pure cream. And so what I do, I place that into the thickened cream container because there's still a lot of thickened cream inside. And so what I do is just Give that a good shake up and just take as much out as we can. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I'll put in three tablespoons of caster sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla essence. Okay, basically just put it on low speed. So just keep turning that bowl around. So you can see it's thickening up already. It's only been one minute. Now you don't over mix this. This is getting really close. Now I'll just will stop it for a sec. And I'm just gonna mix everything in because the sides are not getting mixed in properly. It's a fine line between not enough and too much. It's a little bit of a glaze to it still, so I'm just gonna go a little bit more. Okay, and that's it. So that's looking really good. That's actually holding really well. So again, you need to mix this custard before you place it on. So just mix it up one more time. There we go. And I'll just place that on top. So I'll just spread that around, just like what I did for the chocolate. Okay, so we'll place the top section on. Just squeeze it down a little bit. So just go through and clean that up. Okay, so I'll put that back in the fridge and let it cool down again. Okay, so I've sat it in the fridge for a little while just to let everything settle and just to go hard again. So now I'll just put the cream on. Just place it with this plastic spatula. So I'm making it around about a centimetre high. So this cake will wobble a little bit until you put all the cream on. Okay, so we'll clean this up in a second. I'll just place all the cream on first. Okay, so now using a flat spatula, I'll just now straighten that out. So now just come back to the top, just straighten that out a little bit. I'll just build up these edges a little bit. There we go. Okay, so once you've done the edges, you'll find that the tops will have a bit of a, a high point. And so what I do, I go the opposite direction. So the high point here, I'll go that way and just flatten it out like that. Okay, you see a lot of the bubbles on top of here. And that's the problem a lot of people have when they're putting cream on cake. And I'll show you how to fix that in a moment. Okay, so the cream was a little bit soft, but that wasn't a big deal because the sponge itself will soak it in and stiffen it. So just be patient with it. Okay, so you can see now it's holding pretty nicely on the edges. I'm just trying to just finalize the curve. Okay, so what I'll do is just put some hot water in this pan, in this baking tray. Okay, so now, using this flat spatula, place it in the hot water. So what you're effectively gonna be doing is melting the cream. So remember this cream is like a butter, it will melt. So let that heat up, wipe all the water off, and then just smoothly go over it. It's almost there. So basically just push the waves, you'll get some marks, push those marks right to the edge and we'll cover them up with the decorative cream. Look at that. All right, so we've cleared everything out 
And now we're gonna put the flaked almonds. So this is a little bit tricky putting these on. So what I do is place it in my hand like this and try to get a fair amount on one go. So basically just do that and just tap them in gently. So what will happen, the almonds will suck up the cream and it will stick on. So they'll sort of vacuum on almost. So what I'll do now, just manually, just pick them up and just put a bit more on. So the almonds actually hold the cream in place. It's, it stiffens the cream up. So the almonds will soften by tomorrow. And the great thing about putting these almonds on, it actually perfects the curve of the cake. So all you do is just curve your hand like that and just put it around and it'll actually curve the cake nicer. Just a little trick there. So if you are allergic to nuts, there is an alternative. Um, just a couple of years ago, I did make a cake for my brother-in-law's wife um, and I used sprinkles. Now it didn't turn out the same and uh, it didn't hold as well and it didn't taste the same, but at least for the first time she got to try my continental cake. So there is easier ways than putting these almonds on. Uh, I've been told, I've never done it, but I've been told you can actually buy it on a sticky paper and all you do is just wrap it around and let it uh, sit for a while and then you peel it off. Um, so I've never tried it, uh, never even researched it. All right, so now I'll just tap it down, tap it down all the way around. That's looking beautiful, look how round that is. That's actually probably the best I've ever done. <laughs> so I'll go around and just find any ball spots. At least I can fix the cake's ball spots. Okay, so now I'm gonna just, with a knife, just push in the edges so I can put a decorative cream on the base. Okay, so I've got Marion back again and she's gonna decorate the top for me. Marion, that looks beautiful. You've done a great job. Wow, you've perfected the cake. All right, so I'll put the right in on. Hopefully I don't break it. Okay, so this is gonna be a little harder because the letters are done individually. Look at that. Thank you, Jenna and Angela from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Okay, so the cake is complete. Thanks to Marion. Done a great job with the writing. It just finished it off. And so I'm looking forward to tomorrow for our taste testers to come and taste the cake and tell me what they think. Hello. Hey, Jenna. Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you, Doug? How are you? Nice hey, Angela. You thanks for coming. Hey, okay, guys, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, nice to be here. It's Thanks. so great. You know, I've been waiting to make this cake for so long. It's, everyone's been asking me, all our friends and relatives, when are you gonna do the continental cake? And everyone's been waiting for it. And uh, it was a bit of a teaser actually, so I finally decided to do it. And I just wanna thank your husband, if you can please thank them for me. Of course. So can I give you a coffee before we start? Yes, please. Yeah. So Jenna, we met uh, back about 11 years ago. A long time ago. Yeah, uh, when we moved back to Sydney from Batemans Bay. Yes. I think we came over because it was Marcus's birthday party. Correct. So I had, I brought Isaiah, who was in Marcus's class, and my other children. Yeah. And you served this cake. Yeah. And I went, whoa, <laughs> pretty good. And you know what, I'm not a cake person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't like cakes, so this yeah. was pretty good. But for me, what was really interesting is that uh, two years later, Something else happened. It was my 40th. Yeah. 2013, that shows you my age. <laughs> um, and I asked you to make this cake. <laughs> yeah, and there was a uh, hundred people there, there or thereabouts. There. Yeah, it was a fun night, I enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to Chris uh, for hosting. Mm -hmm. And Angela, we met about the same time when our boys were in the same class. So uh, our older boy, and um, I can't remember how uh, you came across eating the cake, but I, it was sometime that same year in 2011. I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't your birthday, was it? No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the moment of truth. I'm going to cut the cake. Thank you. That looks really nice. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful consistency. Mm, there we oh, go. Thank, thank you. you. So is this your favourite cake? Yes. Okay. How's the texture? <laughs> Very good. Very nice. Um, so I had a bit of a problem making the cake. Um, we've had our elements changed on our oven. And so both the top and bottom element. 
And so we got used to the stove not getting so hot. And so I did my normal 170 degrees Celsius, but I left it in a little bit longer than I would normally. You usually cook it between 40 to 50 minutes. Um, but yeah, so I left it a little bit longer and it went a little bit golden brown on the outside or a bit more brown than golden. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I was a little worried, but um, yeah, so the liqueurs will soften it. So I wasn't too concerned and the creams will also soften it. With the Continental also, you probably find in your experience that the longer you leave it, yeah. the better it tastes. Exactly. Now you're an Italian, it you know that, right? Mm -hmm. So with a, a continental cake, in actual fact, you can keep this for like a week or more. Mm -hmm. The yeah. only reason you wouldn't leave it more than that because the creams and the custards will go off. So you've got like a week uh, lifespan on that, possibly maybe more. It's so nice, it won't last a week. And so this is the recipe. And so I'm gonna put that in the descriptions. And I'll also put a link for all the products I've used and also for Nicholas, who fixed my stove. So I'll put a link in for him. He's a great guy. Uh, he does, he fixes all types of appliances. He's a really good guy. Mm. Mm. This is beautiful. That vanilla custard's very nice. When you taste the custard on its own, it's really bland, mm. really bland, because it hasn't got much sugar in it, hasn't got much anything in it. But when, you, with the, when the liqueur seeps in, it just adds a new flavor to the custard then just takes it to a new level. It infuses, it's very but nice. it's not very, it's not too sweet, it's yeah. not too strong. Purposely not too sweet. No, and you can keep eating it. Yeah. Eating it, and eating it. And eating it. The ingredients show a high amount of sugar and other ingredients, right? But look at the size of this cake. This here, this cake, the reason it's so, for me, uh, is uh, a great taste because nothing on its own, any component of this on its own, tastes fantastic. Well, nothing in this cake is overwhelming. Yeah, that's course. correct. It just works, doesn't it? It just works, works it's beautifully. It's very light. Yeah. It's very nice. Beautiful. Well done. Thank beautiful. you. Thank well you very done. much. Thank you. And um, look, thanks for coming out of your way to, to be the taste testers. Thank you, a um, pleasure. It really it means a lot to me, thank right. you. And once again, I want to thank uh, Tina Scroy and the family. And Phil, thank you very much for allowing me to talk about your mum and God rest their soul. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask you, please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video. And there's many more videos to come. Thanks guys, and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I'd like to thank your husbands for, uh, for letting you guys come. If you can thank Alan and for uh, no, Michael. Alan. You looked at me. Oh, no. I'm married to Michael. She's married to Alan. <laughs> now that's a bluebird. Okay. Oh, I just want bubble. to eat cake. Let's get on with it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't look skinny and pretty, you are not, you're not posting this. Let me tell you. Are you looking at the camera? I know where I'm supposed to be looking, to be honest. Uh, that's your camera. That's your camera. Oh, well, I've been looking over there the whole time. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a great... Mm, I stuffed that up. Yeah, I hope you have a great New Year. <laughs> Even Marilyn Monroe didn't have his best oh. takes. <laughs> yes, yeah, she did. Now, that's a blooper. Okay. <laughs>